The City of Brownsville is launching a series of courses to inform and empower our residents to make the best decisions possible for their family. This course was developed by Brownsville Public Health Department and is an introduction to breastfeeding. Mom and Baby, a breastfeeding guide for expecting mothers, will cover a variety of topics and will help empower our families to make informed decisions when it comes to their baby's nutrition. The goal of this course is to provide you with a basic understanding of what breastfeeding encompasses, the health benefits that mothers and their children receive when breastfed, some breastfeeding tips, and a couple of videos discussing these topics from different perspectives. We should begin with answering two questions. What is breastfeeding and what is breast milk? Breastfeeding is the action of feeding a baby with milk from the breast, and breast milk is milk produced by mammary glands located in the breast of a female. This female breast and breast milk is designed to provide the baby with all the nutritional needs a baby has during the first six months of life. There are several key components in the breast that allow a female to breastfeed. Internally, the adult female uh, breast contains mammary glands, fat tissue, muscle, and connective tissue that holds it all together. The milk is produced and stored in the breast and released when the baby latches onto the breast. Now that we have discussed the key components of a breast and how the breast works to produce milk, we will watch a short video on the positions and latching of baby when put to the breast. Hi guys, it's Laura from the mom team here with Hillary, whose baby Mason is with dad. Hey. <laughs> and today we're going to go over how to master a few different breastfeeding positions. So do you guys have a favorite breastfeeding position yet? Yes, for sure. We really like the side lying hold. That's been our go-to. We have some samples of moms and their babies demonstrating different positions. Do you want to walk us through the side line? Sure, absolutely. With side lying hold, you get in bed and lay on your side with your knees bent and your arm up and out of the way. I like to put a pillow between my knees. And then you just kind of scooch the baby up close and help her to latch on. There she goes. It's so much more comfortable for me, especially when I'm tired, and that's most of the time. <laughs> it also works for moms whose bottoms might be sore from giving birth, or if you have large breasts, this position can be very comfortable. If you're gonna go to sleep afterward, just make sure you put your baby back in his bassinet or crib after the feeding. Now, let's look at the laid back hold. This was probably the first hold that you did right after delivery. Yes, during skin to skin time. So you want to lay back and use pillows for support and then place your baby's face down right between your breast. Your baby will likely search for the breast and kind of nuzzle and might even crawl right up and attach. You can help if you want. Just make sure that your baby's nose doesn't get squished or covered. Okay, now let's talk about the football holds. We like that one. <laughs> So with the football hold, also called the clutch hold, you can start by sitting up and placing a pillow or two at your side to bring your baby up to breast level. Baby goes on top of the pillows with their legs under your arm. Support the base of your baby's head and neck while your other hand supports your breast. Then you just brush your nipple across her nose or top lip, wait for her to open wide, and then bring her towards you to latch. Is she latched? Oh, there you go. That's a great latch. See how a lot of the areola, the dark skin around the nipple, is in her mouth? Now, this can vary from mom to mom, but it's a good idea to make sure that the baby has a lot of breast and not just the nipple. I have a lot of friends who said they really like the football hold after their C-section. It's a great hold if mom's tummy area is still tender. Okay, for the last one, the cross cradle hold. Yes. This position worked really well for us right from the start. A lot of moms like that position. Basically, you place a pillow in your lap, put baby on the pillows facing you, tummy to tummy with you, with baby's nose across from your nipple. Support baby's head by bringing your arm across her body and place your hand at the base of her head. Support your breast with your other hand, keeping your fingers away from the dark skin around the nipple. Brush your nipple across the baby's nose, wait for a wide open mouth, and then bring your baby toward the breast. That one was my favorite at first. It was more comfortable for me when my nipples were a little bit tender, but now we really like the sideline hold. You kind of have to try all of them to find which positions work best for you and your baby. And as your baby gets bigger, different positions might be better. So don't be afraid of switching it up. 
Thank you so much, Hillary, for helping us with breastfeeding positions today. This is Laura for the mom team, and we'll see you soon. Breastfeeding is such an integral part of nutrition. The following health entities have issued recommendations on breastfeeding. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends mothers worldwide to exclusively breastfeed infants for the first six months of their life to achieve optimal growth, development, and health. Healthy People 2030 goals from the U.S. Uh, Department of Health and Human Services recommends to increase the proportion of infants who are breastfed at one year and increase the proportion of infants who are breastfed exclusively through age six months. Uh, the City of Brownsville Public Health Department Maternal and Child Health Division supports both WHO and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services breastfeeding goals. What makes breast milk so good? Well, there are a lot of nutrients in it and it is tailor made for each baby for each feeding. Breast milk contains antibodies, antivirals, antiparasitics and anti-allergens, uh, which protect the baby from illness, hormones, growth factors, DHA, ARA, vitamins, minerals, fat, proteins, carbohydrates and water all contribute to proper development and growth of the musculoskeletal and neurological systems in, in addition to the gastrointestinal system. In essence, everything contained within breast milk serves to protect, nourish, and develop the baby to the best possible results. Breast milk has significant health benefits to both the mother and the baby. For mothers, breastfeeding lowers the risk of high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, ovarian cancer, and breast milk. The benefit for the baby are even greater. Infants that are breastfed have a reduced risk of asthma, obesity, type one diabetes, severe lower respiratory disease, sudden infant death syndrome, gastrointestinal infections, necrotizing enterocolitis, and this is for preterm infants. The health benefits are far greater than can be listed during this course, but the ones mentioned are the most easily documented and researched. Some of these health benefits last far into adulthood, and create a foundation for healthy living beyond childhood. We have provided a few additional videos to address some of the aspects of breastfeeding and some of the difficulties uh, which new families may face while breastfeeding. The next two videos discuss going back to work and or school and how to pump. I've been planning just mentally and physically for returning back to work, um, but I think throughout my journey, it's just been a day at a time. I had really bad anxiety about going back to work and about leaving him and what that meant for our breastfeeding journey. I'll pump the amount of bottles that I know that he'll use and I'll freeze them. I think the main thing was is just realizing what your baby's schedule is before you go back and then realizing what your body uh, regulates that and trying to stick to that schedule within reason the best you can. Some days you just have to stretch it a little bit more, but um, so knowing your places, right? And then if you don't have a space, being willing to advocate for yourself. So I called WIC and they just let me know how often I should be pumping at work. And again, she printed out the um, state laws as far as pumping at work and with your job. And then I talked to my manager been working so far. <laughs> it's been good. It made me feel like I could do it. You know, um, sometimes we try to juggle between, you know, going back to work and making sure that my baby is taken care of. And I was so much more comfortable knowing that I had those things available to me. I would say to other moms returning to work that you can do it. Your body will provide um, enough. Talk to WIC about any concerns that you have. Um, they can definitely help you um, answer any questions. It just makes it easier for me, kind of settles my mind to know that I can leave him with someone and he'll still be able to eat and still be taken care of. It also gives me freedom. If I need to go have a girls' night or if I need to go grocery shopping or just get away for a couple hours so you can get a nap in, right?
Sometimes he sleeps a lot and I will start to get engorged. So in order to keep my supply up and make sure, you know, that he has what he needs, I hand express. So I had to supplement. Um, at, that was the guidance that I was given. And as soon as I started supplementing, my baby was happy. So I knew that it was my supply. And then just through constant pumping and every two hours pumping, I was able to build up my supply so that now I'm exclusively breastfeeding and I haven't had to feed my baby a bottle, which is really, really exciting. The support that WIC offers is so huge is you don't have to figure this out on your own. There are people that are experts in knowing, no, that's the wrong size shield, or why are you trying to do it at this speed, or have you tried this pump instead? I think the biggest words of encouragement that my um, peer counselor and that my support system has given me is that, um, you know, I'm doing a great job, keep at it. I think those are all things that every new mom wants to hear. I did get a lot of information from Wake. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of pump I wanted, and she told me about all different kinds. So she definitely eased my mind, and just having her there to speak to, being a part of Wake was just a big thing for me. <laughs> if you already have um, a WIC consultant that you can go talk to, then that will help you figure out what's not working so you don't have to stay frustrated. Um, if every time you sit down it's not working, well there's a reason why and it's not because you can't do it, it's just you haven't found the right fit yet. You can do it. You can provide for your baby while you're not there. You don't need to supplement with formula. Um, you are enough. You definitely are enough. And your baby thanks you for it. <laughs>
That's right, and you know, whenever I'm talking to someone while I'm breastfeeding, I definitely try to keep eye contact with them. Um, I just think it, you know, they know that it's okay, and they right. understand it's okay to look at me, and it just normalizes things. Right, 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 absolutely. And if you're ever in doubt about your right to breastfeed in public, your local WIC office can provide you with a pocket-sized card to explain this law, and it's actually helpful to educate others around you. That is a great thing to have, especially for those that feel uncomfortable. I know I carry mine around. I luckily have not had right. to bring it out, but I know that it's there whenever I need it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just remember, the more you do it, the more natural it'll feel. And there are many mothers who are out there that feel the same way. So we are in this together. Absolutely. And if you guys have any questions about any of this, let us know. From all of us at the mom team, see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>